ETF. So ETH comes out, gets fucking slotted immediately. It was so obvious this was going to happen. Um, and that's the scale selling. So there's all of these people have been locked into this damn thing forever. Now have to sell. They want to get out of the trade. They've closed the gap. There's a bunch of arbitrages. So this whole thing needs to mess around for a week or two as we puke out a lot of the people from this, people repositioning to the other ETFs and the sales machines of BlackRock and Fidelity and all of these guys go out and start getting the ETH narrative out there. Now, don't forget, it's summer. So they're kind of knocking on the door of their favorite RIA and they're all in the Hamptons or wherever they go. Um, so it's a slower time. But it will get traction. We will see a lot of volumes. Now, the other thing is a lot of you see volumes in the ETFs. So like, oh, my God, they've done 18 gazillion dollars of volume. This is the biggest thing ever because they're being arbitraged. Um, well, that being used as the anchor for the arbitrage. So people are arbitraging the futures contract, which is why when you look at the holders of these ETFs, the biggest ones are like Millennium and all the hedge funds. It was like, look, it's amazing. They're speculating in crypto. No, they're not. What they're actually doing is arbitraging the futures contract with the uh, with the ETF, which acts like spot, because they can't hold spot. There's other people, and these guys don't trade the perps markets. There's other guys arbitraging the perps against the futures, perps against the spot. So there's a lot of these players who are keeping prices together. Arbitrage play a really important role. That is most of the volume. That was most of the volume in all the grayscale trusts as well. They were arbitrations. So... A lot of stuff has to get unwind, so it gets messy and noisy. One of the typical examples... Hello, Nala. How are you? This is Nala, my fur daughter. She's... Um, you know, there's no snacks for you. Not yet. Um, this is what happens a, a lot, even like index inclusions, when you know, a stock comes into the S&P 500. You get a lot of these shenanigans. A lot of hedge funds preposition for it. There's a lot of arbitrage things as the, uh, index arbitrages, figure out where it changes fair value, all of that. Anyway, the main point is the point I always keep making is all fucking noise. It just literally doesn't matter. Is tomorrow more digital than today? Yes. Is liquidity coming? Yes. Edward Snowden emphasized the dangers of political tribalism and privacy concerns in Bitcoin transactions during his keynote at the Bitcoin 2024 conference. Snowden urged individuals to vote independently and remain critical of political figures and parties, stressing the importance of avoiding blind allegiance. He highlighted that Bitcoin transactions are traceable and can reveal sensitive user information, debunking the myth of Bitcoin's complete anonymity. Snowden warned that governments and corporations could exploit digital transaction data using AI to create detailed profiles of individuals. He emphasized the need to secure Bitcoin transactions to protect privacy, noting that the opportunity to act is diminishing rapidly. Snowden's speech at Bitcoin 2024 underscored the importance of political independence and robust privacy measures in digital transactions. Bitcoin's price rebound to nearly $67,000 has sparked a surge in positive sentiment, reaching levels not seen in 16 months. Bitcoin mentions on social media have become significantly more positive, with the highest sentiment since March 2023. Bitcoin's price has rallied 20% in three weeks, currently at $67,680, up 6.22% since July 25. Positive sentiment is fueled by anticipation of Donald Trump's speech at the Bitcoin 2024 conference, where he declared plans for the U.S. to become the crypto capital of the world. Following Trump's speech, Senator Cynthia Lummies proposed a bill for a strategic Bitcoin reserve, suggesting the U.S. buy 5% of the world's Bitcoin supply. The Crypto Fear and Greed Index shows a greed score of 71, indicating a significant rise in positive market sentiment. Let's join Raul Powell in a conversation about these topics and more. So secular cycle. We talk about secular cycles, how they work where we are, and then we've got the secular cycles of the NASDAQ. I just put a log regression and you can see how this works. It's a beautiful channel and it gets to the top, it gets overbought, then sells off. But basically, it's a technological adoption trend. Bitcoin, exactly the same, world of swings, 
actually a steeper gradient. So again, secular trend. The other key secular trend that I follow is India. India is a very great log trend. It doesn't get as overbought. We haven't had kind of a, the bubble cycle. So we haven't had the two standard deviations, which would be the green line. But my God, it's a beautiful market. So those are the identifiable secular trending markets. Then let's see where we are in the macro season. So the seasons I talked about, same as the crypto seasons, spring, summer, winter, fall. So it's kind of spring is disinflationary boom, rising growth, falling inflation. That's kind of, it's going to get a bit confusing. When we talk about inflation here, we're talking about the rate of change of inflation. This is where we were up until about eight, uh, March. Um, and you'll you'll see it in a sec. And then the rate of change of inflation is slowing down. And so that's all, 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 all going up. So that gives you the inflation boom, which is summer. Now, it's not inflationary. There's no inflation coming back. It's not the 1970s again, all that fucking nonsense. It is just Goldilocks. And then fall is when the rate of change of growth slows down somewhat. That's still Goldilocks, but you, that's when the, the amber light is on. So if you look over here, here's the percentage of countries. We look at the whole world here to figure out this whole thing. It's, there's a lot of complex uh, computation behind all of this, but we've done it all for you guys, all including the membership. So 53% of all countries in the world are now uh, that we monitor are in uh, macro summer, 25% in spring. That's falling as people transition to summer. Uh, those in winter, very small, 12.5%. And then in fall, it's very few. So it shows you we have the full footprint of spring. You can see it other ways. So the US, here we go, summer. So this is when the banana zone happens. This is when we're usually in the election cycle as well when this happens. And yes, it doesn't mean the market's going a straight line, but you tend to do pretty well. If I look at, you know, the NASDAQ this year is up 13%, it's corrected somewhat, was up about what 18%. And you know, by the end of the year, it's probably up 30 odd percent. Uh, that's kind of a very typical signature of summer. Crypto goes wild later in summer. So summer is the signature that is really interesting as things get interesting. The Euro area, also in summer. Um, China is in summer, but it has elements of fall, i.e. it is not, the growth is a little bit too slow, which we know. They've been kind of flirting, kind of recessionary conditions and that the Chinese need to do something about, which is what the stimulus is coming. And we're already seeing Chinese stimulus. Excuse me. I'm just going to pour myself in a fresh glass. That's not too bad. It was only 23 minutes before I had to refill my glass. I can drink faster than that. Um, Japan is in summer. So anyway, moving on. The one everyone cares about is liquidity. So financial conditions lead liquidity. This is two weeks out of date because these things don't move a lot. Um, but as the dollar starts weakening and as interest rates start falling somewhat, this is bond yields, not Fed funds. Um, we expect financial conditions to continue to ease. Think of this as a consolidation, boring zone, sideways pattern. What we should see is the next leg higher in financial conditions. Uh, and that means liquidity should follow. Um, it almost always does. Our leads are all pointing to liquidity having to go high. If you remember, liquidity is all about refinancing the debt. 